state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with House Rule 67 and the governor's emergency order 12 pursuant to executive order number 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. This is a committee orientation meeting. Please note that there is no physical location for members of the public to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting. However, in accordance with emergency order, the emergency order, I am confirming that all members of the committee and select legislative staff have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through the Zoom electronic meeting platform and that the public has access listen to contemporaneously listen and if necessary participate in this meeting by the zoom platform or by telephone all necessary access information has been made available in the house calendar and through electronic calendar on the general court website the notice of this meeting complies with house rules and rsa 91-a anyone who has a problem accessing this meeting should call 271-3600 or email Yes, at leg.state.nh.us. In the event the public is unable to access this meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. I want to introduce the staff on the that are on the meeting assisting us right now. We have Jennifer Four, who is our committee researcher. Uh, Joel retired. Um, and please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each meeting states their presence, please also state whether you're, whether there's anyone in the room with you during the meeting, which is required by the right to know law. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to ask uh, Representative Reed to call the roll. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're very quiet. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Although I can see uh, everyone's names, I'm going to call the roll while I take notes. Uh, please correct me if I refer to you or mispronounce your name um, incorrectly. Uh, Representative Tim Lang. Representative Lang is here. I'm in Samford, New Hampshire. My youngest son, Timothy, is junior, is running around being homeschooled. Uh, Representative Abul Khan. Representative Khan. Representative Jean Coach. Yeah. Are you alone? <laughs> yes, I am. Representative James Spillane. I am present and I am in Deerfield, New Hampshire, and I am alone. Representative Raymond Howard. Representative Howard. Did I hear a thing? Oh. There you are. Representative Howard, are you alone? Uh, well, no, not really. I'm, I'm down in my game room. Okay. My family's upstairs. Okay. Uh, but, represent uh, this is really breaking up bad for me. I mean, I have terrible internet, so excuse me if I miss some stuff. Representative Kevin Craig. I'm here at my home in Lancaster. Uh, my son is in the living room around the corner. Uh, wife and daughter are through the house in the bedroom. Uh, they might be able to hear, but no one's listening. Uh, Representative David Love. I am here, I'm in Derry, I'm alone. Representative Dan Wolf. I am here in the one in New Hampshire in my office and I am alone. Representative Mac Kittredge. Representative Kittredge. Representative Donald Dosty. Holbrook, there's a contractor in the house, and that's it. Representative Jonathan Smith. Present and home alone. Representative Catherine Harvey. I'm here in Spafford. I'm in my office alone, but my husband may wander through at times. Representative Larry Laflame. I'm present and I'm all alone. Representative Roger Dottonville. Uh, I am present here in Enfield and my wife is in the house and she may occasionally walk through. Representative Mark King. 
I'm, I'm here alone in the house except for a rabbit and a cat. And my partner may walk through in about an hour. Representative Denny Ruprecht. I believe he is uh, not going to be attending. Representative Steve Shirtliff. You're muted, Steve. I think I sound better muted. Anyway, I'm at my cabin in Bethlehem and I am alone. Representative Donna Ellis. I'm uh, here <laughs> alone in my house in Rochester. Representative Ariel Oxell. I'm present. I'm alone with the door shut in my office. My husband is in the other room. And uh, Representative Ellen Reed is myself and I am present. I am not in my home in Newmarket. I am in Bretton Woods in a public space in a hotel. And uh, I don't know who may come through the area. And I believe we are also, I am going to be recording the presence of the acting committee researcher, Jen Four. Does anybody else attend the meeting since roll call has been called? Mr. Hearing nobody else? We have, a, we have a member of the public with a hand up and I don't know if Jen wants to handle that and see why they are raising a hand or what have you. That's up to Representative Lang if you'd, if you'd like to look into that or we can not. Uh, let's get continue with the orientation portion. We get into right before we start the fish and game presentation, we'll take up whatever the public might have there. Okay. So this year we have a, a little bit different format as everybody sees being remote. Um, one of the things that's gonna necessitate is a, a new committee appointment in all the committees. Um, we'll be appointing a committee technologist this year as well this, um, with just moving the meeting along and helping uh, members with any any uh, issues and promoting promoting panelists. Um, so I also be appointing a committee clerk as well. Um, so for this term, I'm, I'm appointing um, Representative Ellen Reed as our committee clerk, and I'll be appointing Representative James Spillane as our committee technologist. So any questions about those two appointments and what their roles are? Great. There being none, um, I'm, I'm going to get, jump, let's jump right into the fishing game. Everyone's time is valuable and we want to get the uh, presentations uh, done in case we run over with questions. I'd rather leave time at the end than in the beginning. So uh, Jim, if you uh, represent Spillane, if you could start with um, uh, bringing Scott Mason, uh, Executive Commissioner Mason forward, Director. He's been promoted. You got there, Mason. Are you there, sir? Muted. He's muted. Yeah, I just asked to unmute him. He might not be ready because we're up oh, there. We go. Executive okay. Director Mason, you available? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Okay. We can, sir. Go ahead, if you wouldn't mind kicking it off. That I will. It's, um, I, I, I do apologize. This is our first time uh, working with the legislature on, on the Zoom format. Um, it is a different format than what we're used to with some of the Zoom stuff we had done earlier in the year. Um, but uh, hopefully, everybody, hopefully everybody will catch that. Representative Laflame, I like the, the background that you have. That's <laughs> thank you. Um, so I would like to thank uh, you, Chairman Lang, and, and, and all of the committee members for attending today. Uh, my name is Scott Mason, and I am the new executive director of Fish and Game. And like um, some of you, this is my first time going through the legislative process in this role, and uh, I'm looking forward to spending this first year with you folks. Mr. Uh, Executive Director, do you mind holding for one second? Sure. Any, any member who has his mic um, unmuted, could you please mute it during the presentations? It's a little bit easier to hear so we don't have any background noise on what's going on. And then you'll be able to unmute yourself when we get to the Q&A section. Thank you. Go ahead and continue, Executive Director. Thank you. Today I've asked um, Mark Ellingwood, Chief of our Game Division, 
um, to speak to you directly about the work that he does. Uh, under the game division is also uh, our non-game uh, uh, program and our habitat programs. Cherie Patterson is the chief of our marine division. She'll speak on that. Jason Smith, chief of our inland fisheries division. Uh, this includes habitat, um, biologists, and the, the hatchery program. Uh, Colonel Jordan will join us, and he is chief of our law enforcement division. And then Commissioner Chris Hodgson will speak on the role that the commission plays with fishing game. And then um, coming up, I guess you'd, you know, our final batter will be uh, Paul Sanderson. He is our legal and legislative coordinator. Um, he will lead, he'll lead our team through the legislative process this year. Um, he'll be giving you the highlights from our other three divisions, public affairs, the business division, and the engineering division. And I'm going to let Mark sit in here and he will give you his comments. Very quickly, uh, Mr. Chair, it looks like Abul Khan may have joined as an uh, attendee instead of a panelist. Um, there's no last name, but uh, I do recognize Abul, so I will be promoting him to panelist. Mr. Chair, this is- I also see uh, Representative Kittredge uh, listed as an attendee. Mr. Chair, this is Mark Ellingwood. Are you ready for my presentation? Both of them have been promoted. Just give me one second so I can take care of one uh, legislative issue. Uh, Representative Abul, are you with us? He's muted. Yes, I am. Can you state where you are and whether you're alone? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm in my home and I'm in one room alone. Thank you very much. And Representative McKittrich, it seems like you've joined us. Can you tell us uh, whether you're uh, where you are and whether you're with alone or with somebody? Representative, you're muted. Representative Kittredge, if you could unmute, you will. One more time, Representative uh, uh, Kittredge, are you with us? And can you tell us where you are and whether you're alone or not? I'm at home, I'm alone. Thank you, Representative McKittrick. Uh, yep, uh, represent, uh, Executive Director Mason again, continue, I apologize. Thank you much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is Mark Ellingwood. I am Chief of the Wildlife Division. I'm a wildlife biologist who oversees the wildlife group. Um, we have 28 employees within the Wildlife Division, the majority of whom are certified wildlife biologist, but we also have a biometrician, a, a licensed surveyor, and a land agent. Our three primary focuses are game management, non-game and threatened endangered species, and habitat management. The division budget is five and a half million dollars, which is roughly 16 percent of the total department budget. Funding is very diverse stems from things such as de dedicated revenue associated with permits, federal funds that are dedicated for wildlife management. Oop, do we lose Scott, it looks like? Jim, uh, Representative Splain, if you can keep attention to the attendees list and add him back in when he joins. Looks like he dropped the call. So welcome to the world of Zoom and public meetings. If you haven't been on one before, this is kind of what it's like. Here we go, Mr. and he's unmuted Mr. now. Chair? Okay, yep. this is Mark Ellingwood. Can you confirm that you hear me? We can. Thank you very much, Representative. 
Um, in terms of uh, what we do, our primary focus is game management, the setting of seasons, uh, the management of those species that constitute game species within the state that stems from everything from moose, deer, bear, and turkey to waterfall on the coast of the state and everything in between. In total, we manage something on the order of 30 species. These species are critically important to uh, both recreational and economic interests of the state, not to mention the ecological values that they represent to our citizenry. Our non-game and endangered species program focuses on 51 threatened and endangered species, but also includes a significant number of species of greatest conservation need. And the mantra within the program is to keep common species common. Much of what that program does is monitor and protect those species, uh, protect critical habitats, and provide technical services to a diverse group of people and interests that uh, share our values regarding non-game species. Our wildlife habitat program entails both the, the, the purchase and protection of critical wildlife habitats. We have 60,000 acres that we actively manage. We have an additional 20,000 acres in easement. Um, Responsibilities relating to that work include not only habitat management, but also, also infrastructure management and a host of stewardship responsibilities that accompanies our ownership of those vast lands. We also are very vested in technical outreach regarding forest management for the good of wildlife in the state. Um, we fund the wildlife extension specialist at UNH and we are heavily vested in their programs in a variety of different ways. Perhaps most notably, we have a staff member up north fully committed to providing technical services to industrial forest landowners. And throughout the state, we work with landowners to help enhance wildlife values of their property. We also are very vested in animal damage control in the state. We have dedicated staff that do that work. We provide technical services. And we also provide uh, actual control options through permits and we lend and provide provisions that help with mitigation such as fencing, repellents and scare devices. Finally, we have something we call the conflict abatement team, a team of a half dozen biologists who are trained in immobilization and handling of wildlife and so they constitute a first response group in terms of a moose on medians and highways, deer and storefronts, bears and backyards and homes. And so we have that skill set as well. And rather than speak further, I'd simply say that I've enjoyed my history and in interacting with your committee. I tend to be over there quite frequently and I look forward to working with you. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Mr. Chair, Representative Egan is in the attendee list and has been promoted to panelists. Representative Egan, if you could just state where you are and whether you're alone or not. If you're referencing me, yes, it's Timothy Egan, Representative Timothy Egan, I'm alone and I've been on since the beginning on the public channel since I could not access the, I just saw the invite come in at 108 for the private channel, so I've been paying attention since one o'clock. My fault, I didn't see you on the list, get a heads up from somebody else. And Representative, can you tell us where you are and whether you're alone or not? I am alone in my home in Sugar Hill. Thank you very much. Any questions for the marine uh, wildlife biologists? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Scott, who's up next? Oh, sorry, Mark and I are sharing a computer. Um, Cherie Patterson from the Marine Division. She's been promoted to panelist. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, looking forward to hearing your presentation. Go ahead and begin. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and Fish and Game House Committee. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present the Marine Division's work within the Fish and Game Department. We all have our role to play. The Marine Fisheries Division was responsible for managing and protecting the rich natural resources and habitats of the state's coastal waters, harbors, and estuaries. 
Our financial footprint in the fishing game department encompasses 6% of the fishing game budget. We have approximately 25 staff conducting a variety of work. We often work interjurisdictionally with Atlantic states, uh, Atlantic coast states, and other partners to manage over 62 marine species that really know no political boundaries. Providing scientific expertise in stock assessments and modifications to fisheries management plans for species such as northern shrimp, lobsters, American eel, American shad, herring, ground fish, menhaden, as well as their habitat. We manage fish passage systems for diadromous fish to migrate between freshwater and estuarine habitats. And we um, Monitor, we have monitoring programs that collect abundant biological data on numerous marine species residing in or migrating to New Hampshire's marine waters. We monitor the catch and harvest of New Hampshire's commercial and recreational fisheries in tidal waters. And the division manages and develops uh, monitoring and sampling programs for recreational. As well as the commercial marine species and protection of their habitat. The Marine Division licenses and monitors agricultural fisheries in partnership with the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services and the Department of Health and Human Services Division of Public Health. Um, the majority of our aquaculture. Uh, licensees to date are for oysters. The Marine Division also oversees the Great Bay National Estuarine Research Reserve, um, commonly called as Gibna, where the research program um, out of Gibna focuses on understanding the structure and function of the Great Bay ecosystem and the effects of natural and human induced changes. The reserves, research, and monitoring efforts focus on four themes water quality, land use change, biological community, and climate change. Um, workshops are conducted through this program to give New Hampshire high school teachers hands on science technology curriculum to. Um, through the estuary learning programs and bring technical information to community planners and, a lo and local officials in the Great Bay watershed. So it's got a wide reach to it. The Great Bay Discovery Center hosts a variety of educational programs throughout the year, which are designed to teach visitors about the unique natural and cultural resources of the Great Bay estuary. And on a typical year, this includes over 11,000 visitors. Of course, that does not mean last year or into this year. Um, and students, as well as over five, uh, I'm sorry, 7,000 volunteer hours for the various programs and pr projects that they conduct. They also conduct modeling to evaluate the resilience of salt marshes which level rise across the country and monitors indicators useful usefulness to assessing and tracking the health of Great Bay. So as you can see, we have a, uh, a large footprint to uh, be concerned about. Thank you for this opportunity, I appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Patterson. Is there any questions for uh, the Marine Division? There being none, thank you, Ms. Patterson, for joining our group. And Scott, who's up next? Um, next up, we have Jason Smith, Chief of our Inland Fisheries Division. Representative Splank, see if you can find him if he's over in... Uh... He's been promoted. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Smith, go ahead and uh, begin when you're ready. Jason, you're still on mute. Yes.
Jason, if you can unmute yourself, that would be helpful. Yeah, okay. I will start over. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what I previously said was my name is Jason Smith. I'm currently the chief of the Inland Fisheries Division. Our division is comprised of approximately 40 employees, 28 of which work in our uh, state hatchery system. And similar to what uh, my predecessors in this meeting spoke to, we do very similar things as far as species monitoring and habitat protection, but on the freshwater resource side of things. Our division is comprised of six primary focal areas. Uh, we have a cold water fisheries program, which is primarily focused on cold water species such as brook brown rainbow trout. Uh, we do a lot of research on brook trout movement and habitat use and how to protect those areas. Next, we have a warm water uh, program, which administers over 500 bass tournaments on an annual basis. We also work with uh, cool water species such as walleye and northern pike. Uh, we also work with the New Hampshire Athletic Association and a new program out there. We're trying to get kids involved in fishing. So we work with this, all the high schools in New Hampshire that are interested in having uh, competitive fishing tournaments. Our next program area is what we call our Large Lakes Program. They're primarily focused on any body of water that is greater than 500 acres. Species that we manage primarily in these Large water bodies involve landlocked salmon, lake trout, rainbow trout, and uh, to a large degree also rainbow smelt, which is the the uh, forage base and the and uh, the uh, what drives the growth and the health of these fish populations. We also have what we call a fish conservation program. This program works with diadra species, very similar to what Cherie's group does. We work on fish passages. We work with uh, fish ladders to truck, truck and trap alewives and shad and try to restore them. We used to do a lot of work with this restoration of Atlantic salmon, but we also write uh, species recovery plans for species of greatest conservation need. And our fifth program area is what we call our fish habitat. Here we do a lot of um, technical, uh, sorry, we give a lot of technical uh, expertise on regards to stream crossing and fish passage. We invest in land conservation projects when we find adequate quality fish habitat areas that we want to protect among, amongst a lot of other things. And finally, we have our fish culture program. Many of you know uh, across the state, we have six state owned and operated uh, trout and salmon hatcheries. They're located in Berlin, Twin Mountain, Warren, New Hampton, Milford and our Potter Mill Hatchery in New Durham. So with that, I would entertain any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Smith, for that uh, presentation. And thank you for the hatcheries. I've taken all four of my kids to almost all of them at some point in time in their life. So uh, they're excellent little programs. Are there any questions from the, um, from the committee to uh, talk to Mr. Smith in charge of inland fisheries? We have a raised hand, uh, Representative Egan. Yep, go ahead, Representative Egan, mute yourself and go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, will there be any requests or bills filed to help the hatchery? We know that they've been passed in the past of the legislature. Do you see some concerns in any of the hatchery development that are going to need funding? So I. You were broken up, but I think I got the gist of what you were asking. Yeah, one of our big challenges moving forward as an agency is our most of our hatcheries are near or exceeding 100 years old. Uh, operating them on their current, current format is providing some challenges to meet modern water quality standards. So in order to continue to operate at the capacity that we're currently operating, we're gonna need some, invest some significant capital into some of these. Uh, you will see that I've, uh, submitted with the department a capital budget request that I'm hoping that uh, if we need to talk about its consideration, um, we can find time to do so. But those are the types of support that the hatchery system um, is going to need in order to, uh, you know, bridge this gap. Thank you. Do you have a follow up? Looks like Representative Egan's all set. Any other questions for Mr. Smith? 
I'd like to ask one, uh, Mr. Chair, if it's okay. Representative Spillane, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Smith, given the, the situation we're in, um, budget-wise in the state, COVID last year and whatnot, how uh, would you prioritize the fish hatcheries over some of the other uh, budget areas that Fish and Game to be uh, looking to try to sustain? And uh, how vital is it that those issues get addressed this year versus perhaps doing part of them this year and part of them next year? I know we're going to be going into a budget cycle and that information might be helpful. So, it, 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 you know, the, the data clearly suggests that, you know, stocking trout is a tremendous um, revenue source for the department. And what's critical about this particular revenue source, it's what we call unrestricted revenue. So a lot of our fishing license sales goes to fund other parts of the agency. Um, but as far as prioritizing any type of immediate needs for infrastructure, I would say that our current situation over at Powder Mill needs to be addressed at the forefront. And we've had that fishery uh, or fish hatchery come before us before with concerns. So I, I can understand that. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Smith? I have a question. Go ahead, Representative Howard. All right, well, you know, I'm, this is really uh, freezing up a lot on me, but hopefully I'll hear his answer. Uh, Jason, I was just wondering, do we have the federal discharge permit for the new Durham hatchery yet? So that permit went into effect on January 1st. Um, All right, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Mr. Smith? There being none, looks like Mr. Smith, you're off the hook. Uh, uh, Mr. Mason, do we have the next person? Director Mason, do we have uh, next person up? Uh, uh, Colonel Kevin Jordan, Chief of our Law Enforcement Division. Colonel Jordan, go ahead, please. It's Jim, is he in our, is Scott is he in your office? office? Thank you. Colonel Jordan, if you could go ahead and begin, that'd be great. You'll need to unmute, Kevin. Kevin, if you unmute, you can begin. Good afternoon. Does that work? You're there, sir. Go ahead, Colonel. This, this is an incredible system. I wish you all the best of luck moving forward uh, in legislating with, this, with these challenges. Chairman Lang, thank you for having us on board. I look forward to meeting you and working with you. Um, and the rest of the committee, I see a lot of familiar faces and some that are new. I want to welcome you all aboard. And again, I look forward to working with each of you. Um, we spend, or I spend a lot of time at the legislature. We, uh, we're in charge of laws in the state. Um, and I'm very passionate about the laws and the changes that come forth uh, because we worry about our constituents. And and then I, I, my main concerns are with my officers to make stuff that works. Uh, and the committee has been great to work with for over 10 years now that I've been there. So we're responsible for spending about 21% of Fish and Games budget. We're a large group. We're the largest division within the agency. Uh, I think it's important to understand uh, today that uh, we all work as one big family over there. So wildlife uh, priorities, the inland fisheries priorities become the law enforcement priorities. We're supported by a great business division. Uh, we work hand in hand with the Marine Division along our coastline. Um, so it's a very cohesive group and it works It works tremendously well together. And you'll see that uh, hopefully even with this crazy legislative session we're all heading towards. So the Law Enforcement Division does everything that you would expect it to do. We check hunters and fishermen in the field. We're looking for compliance, uh, voluntary compliance is the goal actually for following the rules and the regulations and our bag limits. Uh, we work with the Wildlife Division to maintain uh, plans for future for resources and habitats, and we work to make sure that the general public understands that and helps us to reach those goals. So we're also in charge of search and rescue, we're probably best known for. So any event uh, that occurs off the highways uh, in, in our woodlands or inland water 
uh, ways become our responsibility. That is a big draw on my officers and our budget. Uh, and many here have heard us uh, discussing these issues that are raised uh, re relating to search and rescue. Uh, we conduct about 180 missions. Uh, this year was a little higher because of COVID. We had a lot more people in the outdoors because that was, I think, where people felt safer. But normally, in a normal year, we're up to 180 to 200 rescues a year. Uh, I have four of the best canine teams in the state by far. They're called upon by all other agencies uh, to help them because these dogs are, are highly trained and do a great job. They assist us uh, tremendously in search and rescue. Uh, and that program is run completely off of donations, which we're pretty proud of. Um, so the equipment and the dogs and all the training is done outside of state budgets, which is helpful. Uh, we have the, the best underwater uh, sonar search equipment in the state now. And I have a really top notch team that operates it. Um, and so we have the ability to to search at great depths when we can't get divers down and to, to conduct accurate and efficient search missions. This is used by Marine Patrol uh, during drowning recoveries when we, uh, we assist in those uh, endeavors, which we do 12 to 14 each year. Uh, we're in charge of all the OHRV, ATV, UTV, and snow machine enforcement within the state. Uh, that has become, that has grown uh, tremendously over the last few years, exploded really in the North Country. Those have, present some have presented challenges as we have 42 field officers currently in the field covering the entire state. And I just want to remind, I like to remind folks that the city of Concord has 80 police officers on its force. New Hampshire Fish and Game has 42 covering the entire state as a comparison. So these men and women are busy. Uh, and they, they work real hard to make sure that they meet all of these priorities. So we enforce uh, speed limits and we do all the accident investigation, all the violations and trail related uh, issues along with uh, DNCR within the state that, it, that comes under our responsibility. Um, and we also run a pretty successful television show. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to watch Northwoods Law. It's a good example of what, uh, what our staff does on a daily basis. Uh, and it'll give you in, some insight into some of the challenges that we face and some of the limited resources uh, that we work with and how well that all goes. So we're very proud of what we do. We're very passionate about it. Uh, we feel it's vital to the state and to its citizenship. And we look forward to working with you to protect that moving forward. Um, that is really a thousand foot view, but I wanted to keep it as short as I could. And, and I certainly am willing to answer any questions anyone might have. Thank you, Kirk Jordan. And thank you for that uh, introduction. Um, are there any questions from the committee uh, for Colonel Jordan? Mr. Chair, I'm seeing a hand raised from a Grace Hodgson in the attendees list. I don't know if uh, you want to allow questions from the public at this time or not. Yeah, why don't you unmute her, Jim? Don't pet promote her. Just unmute her, Representative Spillane, and we'll let her ask her question. Hey, good, good afternoon, everybody. This is Chris Hodge, uh, the commissioner from Merrimack County. I, I was just simply raising my hand to note that I uh, was ready to go next. So. Oh, well, then stay right there, uh, Commissioner. There and we'll, as soon as the colonel's done, we'll, we'll, we'll have Scott introduce you. I'll do that. Um, Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for Colonel Jordan? Colonel Jordan, it looks like you're off the hook. Have a great Thank day. Thank you, sir. And Scott, if you could introduce your next uh, speaker. Next up, we have Commissioner Chris Hodgson. Uh, he is going to be speaking on the role of the Fish and Game Commission. <clears throat> Commissioner Hodgson, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? We can. I can, sir. Excellent. Uh, so thank you for your time. Thank you to all members of the committee for this opportunity. I, I wanted to uh, just provide a bit of information about the commission's composition and how we're structured, and then uh, a little bit uh, more detail on our duties and role in support of the department. So in terms of our composition, how we're structured, we have 11 members, uh, one from each of the counties, so we're geographically diverse. Uh, we have one member from the seacoast. Uh, those are the communities that touch our seacoast or Great Bay. 
and uh, all of our terms are for five years. Uh, occasionally, they are shorter because they're filling an unexpired term. Uh, we, all of us, go through the uh, governor and council process for appointment, and annually we elect a chair, uh, a vice chair, and a secretary treasurer to lead us. Um, we principally conduct our, our work uh, inside our committees and inside our full commission meetings. Uh, we meet monthly as a full commission. We have uh, approximately eight uh, committees that are all comprised of members of the commission. Several of those are uh, interagency committees. They include the Lakes uh, Advisory Committee, the Rivers Advisory Committee, uh, both of those being also going through the governor and council process. And then we have a commissioner who's liaison to the Marine Advisory Committee. Uh, so really a lot of our, what, what in some respects makes the commission and the department unique, I think, is the extent to which we have just a, a very large amount of opportunity for public input through our monthly meetings, our committee meetings, and then the other uh, interagency committees that we participate in as commissioners. Um, with respect to our, our duties and our roles, uh, if you were to look through the Fish and Game statute, virtually entire statute in one way or the other defines what we do as a commission. But really, um, I, I'd focus on 206-4A, which is the most the general statement of our duties. And, and um, those really are, and I, I think all of us take to heart the fact that our duties are to be stewards for our state's uh, wildlife and lands, uh, be represent, the citizens representatives on these issues, and um, also to set general policy for the department. And then in, with respect to general policy, the statute goes on to define uh, four more specific elements. And those are the conservation and protection, management of our wildlife populations and habitats, uh, where our duties include the development, funding, and implementation of a long-range strategic plan, uh, the acquisition, development, and maintenance of public access to our lands and waters, uh, public age education, and the building of support uh, among the public for our, our efforts. And then we also establish um, policy positions on legislative issues uh, that come before your committee and the legislature that affect uh, our, our fish, wildlife, and uh, marine resources, and the overall management of the department. And I'm often asked, you know, that the duties of the commission are really well articulated in the statute, uh, but uh, constituents often ask how we make our decisions. And the commission's done a fair amount of work developing what I call a decision-making matrix within which are, we consider all the issues that come before us. And, and those really are, um, encompass five different elements. Uh, we consider uh, the biological impacts and, uh, of a recommendation. We consider the financial uh, implications and constraints of a uh, proposal or policy, the legal considerations and their ramifications. Uh, the technical feasibility uh, is an important element. Um, there are a lot of great ideas, but being certain that, that we can technically uh, accomplish them is important. And then another great consideration in our work is the social and political aspects of it. We, we need to take seriously the part of our duties that call on us to build public support and acceptance for what the department's doing. Um, we also have a rulemaking uh, role uh, that is uh, varied. There are 20 some subsections to the department's rules. And, and really, uh, if you were to narrow in on where the commission has the, the largest role, it's in the, the wildlife seasons, fishing, uh, licensure and, and education uh, rules. That'd be 300, 400, 1100 and 1200. And then uh, elements of the marine and uh, importation and possession rules also have um, commission engagement. Uh, we uh, frequently participate in the public hearings that the department uh, conducts, review public comment, and then uh, of course at our meetings deliberate on and uh, 
either adopt or consider uh, rule proposals before it moves on to the gel car process. Um, part of our role is also uh, the approval or consent for the expenditure of certain funds. Uh, these are principally funds that are um, uh, derived through the, the licensing process. We have a wildlife uh, habitat, a fisheries habitat, a game management fund, um, I think probably being the largest ones. We also uh, accept and um, allocate uh, at the so at the um, advisement of the staff donations to the department. I, I really think that's one of the most extraordinary aspects of the fish and game department. We routinely see um, dozens of individuals in a given month make donations to the mission of the department, which is, it's, I think it's really extraordinary when you consider uh, people donating their hard earned money to uh, the mission of a government agency. It's not, a, it's not the most common of occurrences. Um, and then lastly, constituent service, you know, in addition to just public engagement, uh, we field uh, a wide variety of inquiries from the public, um, both uh, inquiries related to policies, but just also uh, inquiries related to education and, and information. And, uh, you know, they really run the gamut of everything from uh, you know, what do I do with a fox under my porch to can you help me with a alteration of terrain uh, application that I have have pending. And uh, it's, um, it's, so it's really a, a varied uh, set of issues that come up before the commission. And uh, I, I think a tremendously enjoyable and, and uh, fascinating experience for all of us. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your time. Happy to, uh, to answer any questions that you may have and um, look forward to working with you during the session. Thank you, Commissioner Hodgson. Are there any questions from the committee for Commissioner Hodgson? The sound of silence is deafening, Commissioner, so I think you're free to go. Thank you, sir. Director Mason, do we have anybody else uh, lined up here? Uh, yeah, uh, Paul Sanderson is our legal and legislative coordinator, and he'll be um, finishing up. Uh, for us, and he will be explaining the roles of the other three divisions here at Fishing Game, Public Affairs, Business Division, and the Engineering Division. He has been promoted, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Splain. Mr. Saunderson, are you with us, please? You'll need to unmute yourself if you haven't done that already. There we go. I think that did that achieve it? It did, sir. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm here to speak with you as the legal and legislative coordinator. I'm a member of the director's office uh, to talk to you about the remaining three divisions of our department. And it is not because they are by any means less important because that certainly isn't the case. The first one I wanted to describe to you is the business division uh, because they are responsible for uh, achieving the collection of revenue in our department. Uh, they do that uh, through operation of the licensing system where they sell uh, hunting, fishing, and trapping licenses. That's done both in person and also online. Uh, they are responsible for operating the system used to register uh, snowmobiles and all off-highway vehicles, OHRV machines. Uh, with all of this information that's collected and all of the revenue that is collected through this various licensing operation, they also support the work of the law enforcement division by providing up-to-date information on the status of licensees and registrants that's used in the field by the law enforcement division to determine if violations have occurred. They also support the work of the critically important federal aid coordinator in the collection of funds from various federal agencies where we receive uh, revenue by means of grant. So after we have all of our revenue collected, they account for uh, the uh, how this is uh, dealt with in our various specialized and dedicated funds. Uh, unlike other agencies, we have the Fish and Game Fund, which is not a general revenue fund, general uh, fund uh, revenue. It is specialized and dedicated to the work of the Fish and Game Department. And they also manage a total of 16 other dedicated and specialized funds. Some of those were described to you by Commissioner Hodgson. Uh, 
They also handle all of our accounts payable and disbursement operations. They support the staff and administrators of each one of our divisions by assuring that all of the obligations of the department are properly documented and paid in accordance with requirements of both federal agencies and the State Department of Administrative Services. As part of this, all contracts, requisitions, governor and council and fiscal committee items are processed in that division. Uh, after all of this work of receiving money and paying money is done, they create periodic financial reports on both revenue and disbursements for both internal purposes and also by use of all external parties, including the Department of Administrative Services and the legislature. Uh, this being a budget year, uh, the business division is responsible for the preparation of all required state operating and capital budgeting requests for the department. And it is their staff that responds to questions received, whether it be from the governor's office, the Department of Administrative Services, or any responsible legislative committee. Uh, they are responsible uh, to, for determining after money has been spent auditing support. They provide staff and information when auditors are assigned uh, to look at either financial transactions or when the legislative budget assistant sends over a request for a performance audit from the legislature. And then finally, they are responsible to procure, maintain, and ultimately dispose of over 140 uh, vehicles that go on the road, as well as all of the boats, snowmobiles, trailers, OHRVs, and pieces of heavy equipment that are used in the operations of the department. So as you can see, they provide a very important back office support element to all of the divisions of our department. From there, I wanna move on to our facilities and lands divisions. It would probably surprise many of you to know that the department manages or owns more than 160 buildings, 135 boat ramps, 130 dams, seven fish ladders, and over 80,000 acres of wildlife management areas, conservation easements, and other interests. Uh, our facilities and lands division uh, works to complete the maintenance <clears throat> on all of these properties uh, as much as possible using our own forces, but when necessary, they have access to uh, specialty subcontractors and professional engineering services. They do this with a very small staff, including the public works manager, the public boat access program coordinator, one land agent, one engineering technician, small construction crews, and a grounds foreman. Uh, the boat access construction and maintenance duty of this division handles all of these ramps. Uh, that includes not only designing and constructing those that may be new, but also keeping those that have been in place for a period of years maintained and in operation. On the 160 buildings that we have, they do everything ranging from uh, routine light maintenance all the way to full office renovations and roof replacements. They design and plan also for energy use management and conservation and the operation of all of our facilities as required by law. And then land management is done using a team that involves representation from all of our divisions uh, to try to determine the appropriate way to manage and use all of the lands that we have. I wanted to end with the public affairs division primarily because We've spent these last few minutes giving you a huge amount of information, which I'm sure uh, is hard to retain and hard to remember. So therefore, what I wanna do is, is part of the Public Affairs Division to say they're the people that operate our website, uh, which is uh, found at wildlife.state.nh.us, or you can find it using uh, a state agency link through the state website. And that's where you're gonna find more information about any of the issues that we've talked about today, as well as many more. But in the Public Affairs Division, it isn't just the website. Uh, they also have an information unit that is involved in marketing and prom promotion of all of our programs, including merchandising and advertising. They are the ones that provide public information notices and manage media relations, and that includes social media, broadcast media, event management, the creation of our publications, and also relationship with landowners, which is a program we have to maintain uh, properties as being open to hunting, fishing, and trapping uh, by solving difficulties that landowners may have 
within, with how their land is to be used. That division also operates the education program, which includes not only voluntary uh, conservation education matters, aquatic resources education, but also statutorily required hunter and trapper education courses. Some examples of the more voluntary courses are uh, trout in the classroom program, the watershed education program, the Watershed Ecology Institute, the Let's Go Fishing program, Becoming an Outdoors Woman program, Wonders of Wildlife program for grade school children, and the Urban Wildlife program that is a partnership with the New Hampshire Audubon, uh, Massabesic with the Manchester Schools, and Project Wild, which is a teacher-based wildlife curriculum. Uh, in order to accomplish these educational objectives, we operate the Owlbrook Hunter Education Center, uh, which is up in Holderness. We operate a summer camp for children called Berry Conservation Camp. There is a discovery room at our headquarters building, which hopefully at the end of COVID will be back again open for people to be able to see and use, as well as visitor centers at two of the state fish hatcheries. Again, we've given you an awful lot. There is a lot to read that is on our website if you have any particular questions or interest in any of the things that we've described to you. But other than that, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions and say that I'm the one that primarily will be talking to you as you start considering bills. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Does anybody have any questions for uh, Mr. Sanderson? I would like to ask uh, Paul if he wanted to make uh, contact information available to all of the reps while he's here, because uh, he is a fantastic resource uh, for direct outreach from us. Sure, I'd be happy to. For, for all of you as representatives, you can reach me by email, uh, and that is paul.sanderson at wildlife.nh.gov. Uh, and you can also call my phone number. <clears throat> my direct line at the department is 271-1136. On days like today, when I'm operating remotely, that rings directly on my cell phone. So in fact, I'm available to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, so whether it is by an email communication or a telephone communication, uh, not only to me, but to anyone else, if we can provide help and assistance to you, we'd be glad to do it. Mr. Chair, Representative Harvey has her hand up. Thank you, Representative Harvey. Go ahead with your question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a question for the department in general, and I didn't know if you were going to have an open question and answer for the whole department. It's not necessarily a, a question for uh, Mr. Sanderson specifically. So let's finish up with Paul, and then we'll jump back to your question. Does anybody else have a question directly for Mr. Sanderson? Representative Ellis, were you raising your hand? Yes, I would like him to repeat his uh, email address. Sure, be glad to do that. It is Paul, P-A-U-L dot Sanderson, S-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N at wildlife dot N-H dot gov. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anything else for Mr. Sanderson? There being nothing, we're going to jump back to Mr. Mason, and we can go back to uh, Representative Harvey. If you have your question, you can ask, and Scott can get us to the right person to answer it or answer the question himself. Thank you. So um, it, this may not be a question that is answered today, um, but at some point, and, and maybe it's a private question, I don't know if there's ever interest in this or not, but at some point I'd like to know more about the 20 by 20 project and New Hampshire Fish and Games role with that project. Scott, do you want to answer that or do you want to take it offline and you can answer Representative Harvey through an email? Um, we'll take it offline and represent it and answer through an email. Um, Thank you. Can you just distribute that to the entire committee so everyone understands what that 20 by 20 program is? I'd be happy to. And thank you, sir. Once again, I would like to thank everybody. Thank everybody for the opportunity for us to participate with you folks today. Um, I think it's a good learning, learning experience for us. 
So don't go anywhere yet, Scott, because I'm going to open it up for anybody else who has questions of the department in general, based on everything we just heard. And uh, hopefully you can either answer it or get us to the right person. So does anybody else have questions from the committee um, for the fish and game department in general? And Scott will get us to the right person or take the question offline and get an answer to you. Wow, Scott, you got off uh, Scott free. Rep no, Representative Egan just raised his hand, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Representative Egan. You'll need to unmute yourself, Representative Egan. There you go. Yep. My internet's a little slow, so everything's delayed. Uh, Commissioner, nice to, see, nice to speak with you again. Could you share with us what you think your one pressing issue is for the coming year or two that the committee can be supportive to the agency with help? I didn't really word that well. Um, I, I, uh, Representative Egan was asking, what's our one pressing issue? Um, I'm not, uh, one thing I've learned in the last six months is no such thing as the one pressing issue. Overall, the one issue that, that, that impacts us almost in everything we do, obviously, is funding and budgeting. Um, anything we could do to, to change that is, is something that, that uh, is certainly of interest to the department. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I've got a question that occurred to me. Up one second, Jim. Uh, Representative Splain. Uh, Representative Egan, do you have a follow up at all? Are you all set? Okay. Representative Splain, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Mason, uh, your predecessor as director had um, put in a bill through the Senate that allowed him to be the sole decider or the department to be the sole decider of their rates and fees. Uh, at that time, a lot of the rates and fees were raised um, out of state, not as much as in state. Do you have any intention to evaluate the current rates and fees being charged and um, look at parity between out-of-state hunting uh, in New Hampshire, which is Oregon at the moment, versus the surrounding states, and um, address any of that since you're talking about budgeting? Um, this year, we are not. not uh, that would be something we'd probably be looking at in the future. Thank you, sir. Any further questions for Director Mason? Not hearing any, not seeing anybody raise their hands or try to get our attention. Um, Scott, thank you very much for the presentations for all your members. Um, I'm sure we look forward to seeing you uh, in the coming month. Thank you all once again. Mr. Chair, may I recommend that since we are running ahead of schedule, that we take a five minute break, mostly because I cannot type and go to the restroom at the same time? Sure, we'll take a quick five minute bio break, guys. Again, run off and take care of things. We'll be back at uh, 2 11. Mr. Chair, would you yes. like me to keep Ms. Uh, Director Mason as? panelist or from back to attendee oh, you can leave this panelist right now in case something comes up and a couple of things we're going to be talking about next um and then uh, like i said everybody just mute themselves and turn the video off run off do your errands and then come back in a couple minutes and we'll pick this back up
All right, welcome back, everybody. We'll wait till we see some smiling faces on the cameras here. And we'll get started. We have to smile. Yes. It's a Thursday. We all get to hang out together. It's a great reason to be smiling. Looking good, Representative Egan. I have to respect my chair person, my <laughs> chairwoman. If we're waiting on anybody else, Representative Wolf, there's Mr. Representative Flam. Looking for Kevin, Representative Craig, and Jen to come back, and Representative Oxel. Yeah, it's Representative Oxel. Representative Harvey is missing, although she has a nice lamp, it looks like. I think that's what that is. <laughs> I, I think I'm here. Donald. Don. I just put down the phone. <laughs> All right. So to jump back in. Um, the rest of the um, I just want to talk about a couple of bills, public hearings, work sessions, executive sessions, and if you need caucuses. Um, and then we'll do a little quick introduction to members for people up especially our freshmen, the legislature and new to the legislature. I'd like to um, hear from them and introduce everybody around. Um, but let's jump into the discussion about the committee moving forward and what things will look like. Um, so far, we've only been assigned six bills, which means we'll have a pretty quick day, a pretty quick um, uh, legislative session as it relates to the Vision Game Committee. Um, we've been asked uh, to have uh, full committee days. So starting at 9 a.m. and going through to um, 5 o'clock um, to try to hear the bills and get them through so that we're not um, wasting time and, and, and putting, putting bills off longer to be heard if we get them in quicker and through this session. Um, one of the things we will be doing is um, I, I had to try to do what is in law enforcement, they call it a cattle call at court, which has allowed me to schedule all the meetings at 10 a.m. and then take them up as they come up um, in, in an effort to be efficient, because I'm sure as uh, the returning members know, sometimes you schedule a committee hearing for a half hour and it takes five minutes. Sometimes you schedule a committee hearing for a half hour and it takes three hours. Um, and so an effort to try to accommodate some of that, not dead time or where uh, a 30 minute block of time and um, 10 minute hearing. Um, I wanted to put up all 10 o'clock, but leadership has said, no, I'm not allowed to do that. So we'll be scheduling all the bills about in about 15 minute to 20, uh, 30 minute increments um, so that we can short that window. And as built, we, some may be running late because we're bills take longer and some will come up uh, as soon as the clock ticks, but we're trying to reduce the amount of dead time or dead air time in the committee where we're waiting for just clock date a certain number so we can start up a, um, a session or a public hearing. So we're going to try and reduce that so we don't have as much waiting around time and can be efficient. Um, but like we have six bills in, in, in uh, currently assigned when I spoke to leadership last night, the speaker's office, uh, they still had 40 bills left to assign the committees at that point. Um, so I don't know if any of those are fishing game. We may pick up a couple others. Over in the Senate, I believe only two or three bills. So come March, we should only expect a couple of bills coming over from the set. Um, so we should have a pretty short um, action. I, my guess is we'll have possibly just one day of public hearing. And then in the morning, we'll, uh, we'll pick another day and do a morning of work session and just run through the bills to make sure any amendments, any changes, we can have that all lined up and then use the break between the work session and the executive session in the afternoon to get any amendments written. I understand OLS is gonna have a new process for amendments. Um, so as we move from the public session, public hearing to the work session, actually I'm gonna go back to the public hearing. As we're talking about the public hearing, 
Um, all it'll be a hybrid model, so members can either attend by video or attend in the room. Um, all of the room um, sanitizing uh, equipment has been delivered to the state house, so we have um, new devices that'll be in each committee room that will circulate the air five times every hour, which is significantly greater than what the CDC re recommends for an interior room like that. Um, the CDC requirement is two to two and a half times. We'll be doing five, nearly double, or double. Um, so that uh, so so if people want to attend in person, they'll be welcome to attend in person. The rooms will be, my understanding, will be doubled in size. So committee rooms will be opening up window, open up the doors, and people will be socially distanced and just out as far as they want to be. Um, and again, uh, we'll have seating set. But if you want to push further, I have no objection to that. Um, if you want to attend, otherwise you can attend the public hearing by uh, remote and that's acceptable as well. Um, if you happen to be in the LB um, for your, um, this is more about representatives who have bills and other committees. If you're in the LOB, your bill is going to be heard in another committee, you'll be allowed to testify in person as a representative um, because you're in the building. Um, if you are a member of the public, public will be testifying remotely um, and there'll be no public access to the building. The one exception to that rule will be if we have, uh, if Reverend May or, or Paul Sanderson, the legislative gentleman and Colonel Jordan as a lead of uh, those department heads, um, if they're in the building, they're going to be allowed to testify in person, especially if they've got up there for our sick bills. We're hearing six bills and testify and all six of them, they'll be allowed to present in person as well. Um, moving over into work sessions, again, OLS is going to put on, uh, they're going to have a slightly different process for uh, uh, amendments to bills. So if we go into work session and into the work session, we find the bill has merit, but it needs a couple of either technical corrections, mechanical corrections, uh, or, or just a, a, a change to it. We can email um, right in the committee room the amendment over OLS. They will process it and then have somebody hand deliver the amendment back to us in our committee room for, for the um, executive session. Mr. So again, Chair, our case. Yes. Representative LaFlame has his hand up. Yep, let, me, let me just run through it all, then I'll open it up for discussion. Um, I just want to run through the, the list of work sessions, executive sessions. Um, but my goal would be, I think, with six bills to do a work session in the morning work through any issues um, unless we decide when we're in public hearing that it needs a subcommittee and then we'll assign a subcommittee. But um, right now it looks like we're, we'll just go into work sessions in the morning uh, for one day and then that afternoon we'll do the um, executive sessions for those bills. So we're, it looks like maybe two days of, of actual testimony uh, or actual uh, legislative work in the committee. Um, if we caucuses any time, um, you know, either in the work session or in the uh, executive session, the, um, you're welcome to call. We can just do like we just did, a five-minute recess. Everyone can turn their cameras off, and you're going to arrange a, as a caucus lead a different way of uh, handling that caucus, whether it be a private Zoom meeting or, or a phone call, however you, whatever you want to manage as a, um, as a, party, as a party issue. Um, other than that, uh, I will now open up for questions and conversation. So, Jim, Representative Splane, who was it that had their hand up? Representative LaFlame has his hand up. LaFlame has his hand up. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yes, good afternoon. Um, I, I, you're very loud, uh, Representative Lang, but for some reason I'm missing some of the things. Missing some of the things. My question is um, testifying in person as a representative. Is that on bills that you are a sponsor of, or is that on any bill you want to testify on? I was unsure about that. Or is it just bills well, that you are sponsoring? Ask a clarifying question on that with, with leadership, but the answer they gave, the, the statement they made me made was that if you're in the building and need to testify on a bill, you'll be able to testify in person. Um, I, I, I I presume that meant if you were a sponsor or co-sponsor, but it's also kind of awkward to be sitting in the fishing game committee room and, and uh, for whatever reason, and having to testify by remote into another office uh, that's going on. So 
Um, I, I will bring that to leadership and, and when we come back for our first meeting or I'll email the, the committee the answer to that question. Thank you. I may have more questions later. Representative, I'll let the next person go. Mr. Chair, Representative Shirtliff is raising his hand. You had Representative Shirtliff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had a question asked me the other day from the New Hampshire Audubon Society, and I wanted to know if the blue slips would be available for uh, individuals to sign in in support or opposition to a bill. Thank you for that question, Representative Shirtliff. I, I did miss that. So we're still working on a solution for blue sheets and pink cards. Um, I do know the Senate has come up with a model, and I, it's going to be reviewed tomorrow, I think, for decision on how they're managing their Senate, Senate hearings. But yes, we will have an opportunity for uh, a sheet, the equivalent of the blue sheet, and the equivalent of a pink card at all hearings. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions in general about uh, bills, public hearings, work sessions, executive sessions, or caucuses? Good. Representative Lafayette has another question. Another question. Oh, again, Representative Lafayette. Thank you. I can't be the only person with questions. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I have the distinct feeling from speaking to other people that the House leadership has given a lot of latitude to the committee chairman to run the committees in the way that they see fit. And I think that's great. Um, will you be requiring representatives at the in-person, at the committee hearings and committee meetings to have a face covering? So the last... Again, the last thing I heard on this topic was that if you're up, it's, we're going to take a similar to a restaurant approach. If you're up and moving around, you're going to be required to have a face mask on. If you're sitting in your seat and you're socially distanced, you can take your face mask off. Okay. And I guess since nobody else has any questions, um, parking. Are we going to be parking at the regular place in the store street? Um, I assume that we're still going to be able to use our old permits. Um, some of us did not park at Store Street, um, but have they given anything about, like, on committee day? Are we going to have to park at Store Street or park Isn't somewhere that else? Or? in the calendar this week, Tim? I believe it was going in the calendar this week, the issues of parking and the clerk would mail out the appropriate passes. So you park at the store street garage, you get the little know, like green or yellow, whatever the color is they're orange they're picking this year. Um, you'll get a pass for the store street garage as well. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Craig has a question with his hand up. Representative Craig, go ahead. Hi, thanks. I may have missed it, but have we settled on a day of the week for committee hearings? I'm hoping to have the answer tomorrow as to what day of the week the committee hearing will be. Um, they have not given me a day. I asked uh, the speaker yesterday for that, and they said they we're going to finalize that um, this week by Friday. And so I'm hoping tomorrow when I'm in my chair's vice chair meeting, they will give me an answer to that question. And I'll forward that answer out to everybody else once I, once I know what day we'll be meeting. There are no further questions at the moment, but Representative Egan, you had your hand up briefly. Are you all set now? I have a question. I don't know why you don't see my hand raised, but probably because I have inadequate uh, connection here. Can you hear me? I can, Representative Howard. Go ahead, sir. So this, this is my first couple of One, because I only got about 25% of these presentations. Uh, I am a returning uh, member, so I've heard him before, but are we going to get a hard copy of the presentation? And the second question is, uh, can you send out an email just laying out the procedures that you're talking about? Because I'm only catching the email here and there. Thank you. So absolutely, I'll send an email out after the chairs, vice chairs meeting, which they're supposed to lock it down. I just saw we, I got my first notice of a public hearing for a House bill. Senate Bill 2 will be heard next Friday. Um, so in the election law committee, so they, I will send out uh, after I speak with the leadership and that chairs and vice chairs meeting tomorrow, I'll send updated the email. 
I do know we won't have our first committee hearing, obviously, until after the 25th. Um, we'll probably be noticed in the calendar next week uh, with a date and uh, for the public hearings. So, um, but I know that we're not going to start hearings at least until January 25th. Also, intend to send out my I'm sorry, Reed, you were cut out there. I intend to send out my notes of this week shortly after the meeting. Rep. Blaine, did you understand what she said? Because I missed it. She said she's going to send her notes out after the meeting. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chair, you have two hands being raised. Uh, Representative Harvey was first, followed by your Vice Chair, Representative Kahn. So, Representative Harvey, go ahead, ma'am. You have to unmute yourself, ma'am. Sorry, uh, you actually answered my question that there would not be a committee meeting until after the 25th. Uh, I was just going to remind you that some of, there are people that work on the committee and they need more than a week's notice to get a day off from work. But if it's not till after the 25th, we're okay. Thank you for preempting my question. Um, and Representative Splain was the other person. You have Rep, uh, Representative Khan and then Representative uh, Howard. Uh, Representative Khan, go ahead, sir. Representative Khan, your video went away and you are still muted. You are still muted. Perhaps. Okay, back to Representative Khan, Representative Howard, go ahead, sir. Representative Howard, do you have a question again? Uh, not at the moment. Not at the moment. I, I guess I didn't get the first part of my question. Are we going to get five copies of the presentation uh, the Fish and Game put on for us or something? I will speak to um, Commissioner Mason, but the reality is I think almost all the information they gave us is on their website. Um, it was just organizational information about the, which the are and who the people are that um, I'll ask him for the uh, uh, summary presentation and see if he can submit that to the rest of the commission. Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Khan is back to the question. Okay, Representative Khan, uh, Chair Khan, go ahead, sir. Vice Chair Khan, you are muted. Please unmute yourself. There we go, sir. Nope, you muted yourself again. Yep. There you go. Uh, in order to attend the... Uh, the uh, Representative Khan, you just remuted again. I don't know why your system keeps muting itself. You seem to be having audio trouble because you're still muted, and every time you've unmuted, it's gone back. To you've unmuted, it's gone back. We can't hear you, Representative. Hear you. Is this something that could be submitted by an email? By an email. I believe he's frozen. I'm going to I'll reach out to him after the meeting and, and see what his question was. Anything else for um, any questions? So as a takeaway, I'm going to find out about co-sponsors versus just someone wants to testify in the building already. So you have to be in there for a purpose. You can't just show up to testify. You have to be in there for another reason. Um, but we'll find out if you can testify in other committees. Um, I will also send an email to the entire committee on more information on public hearing, work sessions, and executive sessions, and the requirements of those. Um, I think that was my takeaways. Um, anything else? And I'll get the presentation from uh, Scott Mason um, and send that out to the entire committee as well if he gets something up for that. 
So let's real quick, we'll just do a quick round of introductions. So we didn't do that in the beginning and just introduce all the different members. Um, so why don't we work in reverse order uh, representing the free? So start at the bottom of the list that we use for roll call and work backwards. You are kind of chopping, Representative Reed. Representative Reed. In the mountains, so maybe that's the echo coming from your mic. I don't know if you want to mute your mic. You're getting a lot of feedback. Could everyone mute until Representative Reed calls your name, please? So my name is Ellen Reed. This is, I'm entering my fifth year on this committee. And uh, I was not a committee I initially requested, but I am very happy to be on this committee. I don't think I'm speaking out of turn to say that I have a reputation for being one of the more vocal pro-conservation advocates on the committee. Um, my personal background, I have in biology, um, I fish, but I wouldn't consider myself an outdoors person, but I am an equestrian. I do trail ride. Um, and I also want to say that I have so appreciated the work of the department over the years as I serve on this committee. Um, and that's about all I have to say. Um, Representative Oxa. Hi, everyone. Uh, Ariel Oxel. I represent um, Stratford County 15, which is Dover Ward 3, uh, which happens to be the section of Dover, um, South Dover that um, is on Little Bay and Great Bay, um, as well as two, two of the rivers, the Bellamy and the um, Chico that go into the bay as well. Um, I went to University of New Hampshire. While I did not uh, receive a Bachelor of Science, I did take some electives in oceanography um, and environmental classes. So this is of great interest to me. Um, I grew up in New Hampshire and this is obviously my first term and I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Ellis. Um, oh. I represent, I represent um, more the, towards the down North. Rochester. What? And uh, this is my uh, uh, time for running. And I was on the environmental and agriculture. Environmental and two uh, sessions. Two uh, sessions. And now I'm on this one. And I. Kind of relieved to be on it. I don't. It just sounds like an exciting thing in the really aspect of it. Of it. And that's that's it. I'm getting a lot of feedback because I can hear my voice talk. Representative Ellis. Hi, I'm Ellis. 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 I'm
for what's best for our state. And that is the ultimate of the ultimate importance. I'm proud to be with y'all. Thank you, Representative Dottenville. Uh, good afternoon, Roger Dottenville, representing Grafton 10, the beautiful town of Enfield, the host of Moscoma Lake that now has a skating uh, track on it. Uh, it's my third term on fishing game. I'm honored to be in fishing game because I think it is one of the few bipartisan committees in the whole house. And uh, it's great being able to work with one another. And it's nice to be back. Thank you. Thank you, Representative LaFlame. Thank you, um, Larry Flam. I'm uh, I'm one of three members in the House from uh, Coach District Three, which is the city of Berlin. Uh, this will be my third term on the Fish and Game Committee. Um, it's I've, I've enjoyed I've certainly enjoyed my time. Um, I think I've made friends, <laughs> if you will, on the committee, um, and. There have been some divisions in the committee. Um, there have been some disagreements, but it was never partisan. Um, it was always bipartisan. And heaven knows, you know, like I said, it's been disagreements, but it has not been a Democrat or Republican thing. Um, it's, a, it's a very bipartisan uh, committee, and um, I enjoy um, serving on it. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Egan. I believe I skipped you because I had you added later. Okay. Representative Egan? Yeah. Uh, Representative Reed, I think I saw that he left. It looks like he's no longer in the list, Representative Reed. Thank you very much, Representative Harvey. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, uh, Catherine Harvey, I represent Chester District 1. This has been, um, this is my third term on Fish and Game and in the House. It's always been my first choice um, because um, although I don't hunt fish or trap, I certainly support our outdoors. Um, I do a number of things outdoors. Camping is a big thing with my husband and me um, as well, not this year, <laughs> but um, as well as uh, kayaking and hiking and, and, and so forth. So I support our outdoors um, in whatever way I can. Um, I do support ethical hunting, fishing and trapping even though I just don't happen to be one of those. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Smith. Yeah, hi, my name is Jonathan Smith. Uh, I represent Carroll County District 5. Um, I love everything outdoors, hunting, fishing, snowmobiling. Uh, dirt bikes, uh, you name it, I'm outside. I manage a lot of land on my own that I have. Um, and I just care about the environment. But most of all, I'm passionate about liberty and freedom for the citizens of this state. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Kittredge. Please un unmute yourself, uh, Representative. You are still muted. Representative Kittredge. Unfortunately, I cannot unmute him for him. That's fine, Representative Dosti. We'll just go to Representative Kittredge when he unmutes. Good afternoon, Donald Dosti. I represent District 1 up in Colebrook. Uh, IATV, Ice Kidoo, and, and certainly know that tourism is so important to the North Country. So that's why I got involved. In, and uh, I don't hunt and fish, but my sons do. And all of it's important. Uh, I get in, into it a lot to help make sure that the ATV and the tourism and the locals all find a way to get along. We don't want to lose a single dollar in the North Country, as everybody knows, in everybody's districts. It's in, uh, and I look forward to working with Scott Mason and with all of you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Representative Wolf. Uh, Representative Reed, Representative Kittredge was unmuted for a second. Oh, Representative Kittredge, go ahead. Hi, I represent Ward 5 in Rochester, Stratford 12. This is my second term. I'm very interested in joining this committee. Um, I was formerly a municipal and county. Things were less tranquil there. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Wolf. Representative Wolf, if you could unmute yourself, please. Representative Wolf, you're muted. We can't hear you. Okay, Representative Wolf, you're still muted. There we go. There we go. We couldn't do it off the picture. Uh, I'm Dan Wolf. I represent Merrimack 5, which is Newbury in New London. I've been very involved and very passionate towards maintaining New Hampshire's open spaces, the wonderful environment we have. Somebody spoke about the tourism that's cut, that comes because of the environment. Um, I manage a lot of land in the Newbury, New London area and have worked with Fish and Game and with the um, search and rescue part of Fish and Game. So I look forward to working with you. Um, after two year, two terms on education, I understand this is a wonderful committee where everybody gets along well. So uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Love. Hi, I'm uh, Representative Dave Love. I uh, I represent Rockingham Six, which is Derry. Um, my, this is my second term, my, my second term on Fish and Game too. Um, you know, um, the, the outdoors is, is part of who I am. I, uh, I, I spent my, the summers of my formative years on, uh, on Winnipesaukee and uh, there isn't too much, too many parts of that lake that I haven't wet a line. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I, I, I know that conservation and uh, hab habitat uh, preservation is uh, is real important to you know all everything fish and game, and uh, you know I, I look forward to to helping the department uh, you know uh, keep New Hampshire uh, in in a in real good shape. You know, I I like to re remind people that um, there was a guy that, that testified last year uh, on a bill, and uh, and he left us with with a, a, a really really nice thing. He said uh, New Hampshire fish and game is the best in the nation. Don't mess it up. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that, that's, that's my, uh, that, that, that's, that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to make sure we maintain the best in the nation. And uh, I look forward to doing that and uh, working with all of you. Thanks. Thank you. Representative Craig. Hi, sorry, I uh, missed out earlier. Uh, we were doing some cleaning around the house and apparently either my modem or router got uh, unplugged and I had to go reconnect to the uh, entire network. Um, so I am uh, Kevin Craig. I represent Coas District 4, which is the towns of Lancaster, where I live, uh, Dalton, and the unincorporated place of Kilkenny, uh, which is east of Lancaster and consists of uh, national forest. Uh, this is my second term in the house, uh, second term on Fish and Game. I uh, enjoyed it very much last year, and I look forward to working uh, with all of those who are returning and getting to know the newcomers uh, to the committee. Uh, I've spent a lifetime outdoors. Uh, I enjoy fishing. I theoretically hunt until it comes time to get up and go. And then I'm like Ron White, it's really cold, it's really early, and I don't want to go. Uh, <laughs> but, and I'm afraid I would actually, uh, you know, catch a deer and then I would have to process it. And that's a lot of work. So uh, I uh, don't have uh, any OHRVs at the moment, although I look forward to uh, joining in that sport sometime in the coming years, uh, assuming I ever have time. Uh, being semi-retired keeps me busier than ever. Uh, so it's good to be back and uh, good to see all of you again. Thank you, Representative Splain. Okay. Um, did you, I, I was expecting Representative Howard to go next, but I, I will do. I apologize, Representative Howard. Hello. 
We can hear I've never you. Never heard the uh, the question to begin. Very few responses. But um, anyways, I'm Raymond Howard. I represent Belknap Eight. That's Bonstead All in Gilmington. We're right here on the lower end of the Lake Mississauki, a great place to live. And uh, I look forward to meeting all of you in person and hopefully be able to hear what you're saying. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Howard. Representative Spillane. Hey, I am uh, Representative James Spillane. I represent uh, Rockingham 2, which is Deerfield, Candia, and Nottingham, right here Bear, by Bear Brook State Park. I actually live not too far from Bear Brook State Park. I could probably uh, throw a rock and hit it from here. Um, I am surrounded by about 200 acres of mountainous terrain that uh, I hunt and fish, uh, more hunting than the fishing. Um, I am on my fourth term, and I've been on fish and game every term. So I'm on my fourth term of fish and game as well. Um, I started a charity for veterans on my first term in the New Hampshire house and on fish and game called the New Hampshire veteran sportsman foundation. And our aim is to give free hunting and fishing licenses to any veteran in the state that is in need so that we can keep them outdoors and getting exercise and, and outdoor therapy. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Close. Is Representative Close? I with do us? not see Representative Close on the line anymore. All right, Representative Khan. Representative Khan, you're having a mute problem again. Mr. Chair, would you like to do your introduction or would you like to continue waiting for Representative Funk? No, I was going to give him a minute, but I'll jump in and then if he works it out, he can jump in and interrupt me. Uh, Representative Tim Lang, I'm in my third term. I've served on the Ways and Means Committee for two terms, election law for committee as well last term. I was a multi, ran multiple committees and then I also served on JALCAR. In my, this is my third term on that committee as well. Um, I live in the Lakes region. I s service the towns of Tilton and Samberton up here at Exit 20. And you hear me reference Exit 20 because I was originally born in New Jersey and everything is re relative to an exit number. Um, so, uh, so I'm off of Exit 20 there. Um, I've lived in New Hampshire over 38 years now. Uh, so more than half my life is spent here in the state. We moved to the state because I grew up, as Jim mentioned, Bearbrook State Park. When I was a kid and we lived in New Jersey, every weekend we would come up to Bearbrook and camp. And it got to the point where as soon as I was out of school, we'd come up and camp and my dad would go home on Sundays and leave my mom and the rest of us nine kids up at Bearbrook State Park to spend the entire summer at Bearbrook State Park. And he would come up every weekend to visit with us. So uh, I've come to enjoy the outdoors a lot. I hunt, I fish, although I don't think I've shot in I shot a deer in a long time. Jim's going to have to probably help me with that one. Um, but uh, I go out on a regular basis with my children. I have four kids. Um, they range in ages from 26 to 17. And uh, we still go out and fish and out on a boat and hit, hit our lakes and enjoy ourselves. So um, I'm looking forward to serving the committee and, and, and working with the committee to, to pass the bills and move them forward. And um, I'm happy to... Uh, reach out. Anybody can reach out to me anytime. And I, I'm a tech guy, so I tend to be up really late at night, not so much really early in the morning. Um, so if you have a question at 10 o'clock at night, feel free to text me. My cell phone number is 603-566-9802. One more time, it's 603-566-9802. Nine eight zero two, and feel free to text me at any time, day or night, and I'll answer it as fast as I can. Um, I will just remind committee members: um, if you're not going to make executive, make sure you get to your party leadership and let them know so they can assign a replacement for executive session. Um, and I guess that's it. 
Is there anything else we want to cover in the committee? Any it other questions? Like, um, it looks like Representative Khan is unmuted. All right, Representative Khan, let's go back to you. Let, let, let's try it. You know, my name is Abul Khan. I, I represent Seabrook and Hampton Falls in a District 20. Uh, this is my fourth term serving, and the second term is in the Fish and Game Committee. I also uh, uh, a member of the Civil Board of Selectment for the uh, fifth term. Uh, I am looking forward to working all of you um, in coming months. Also, I'm delighted to see that our former speaker in our committee. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Khan. Appreciate that. Is there any anything else that's come up since we've uh, we started? Anybody want to ask any general questions? If not, we'll uh, actually be nine minutes early before the end of the meeting. All right, not seeing anything, then we will end this meeting. I will send an email out with the answers to the questions we have, uh, the takeaway items I have to answer, and I'll get that to all the committee members. And uh, until then, guys, look, look, check your email, look for the uh, first hearing date, which should be sometime in the week of the 25th. Thank you. Thank you guys. And I don't see that Jen has joined us again at this point uh, to end the meeting, but I guess we could all, oh, here she is. She is here, okay. Here the whole time. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. All right, bye guys. Thank you.